And Hank Parker Jr. gets victory number two. In so, Dale Jr. happens upon this uh, this little uh, column uh, that he used to that he wrote oh no. uh, for NASCAR.com. Do you want me to read it, or do you want to read it? it this you. is this I is. I can't remember what I'll, it says. All he doesn't I do, remember. All I do remember is so. Let's pair. Let's set it up. Set it up. <clears throat> so back in 2000, I was a rookie in Xfinity in the Cup mm-hmm. Series, and I was wanting to become. I wanted to try to write. Mm-hmm. And uh, I enjoyed writing and, and uh, just wanted to do it, try it, and get better at it. So my PR guy, Jade Gersh, said, you, let's write some columns. And so I wrote a series of about a dozen columns, one about my dad yeah. and one about uh, various things. And I wrote one about you, and I called you. I was driving down I-77 going somewhere, and I said, hey, man. <laughs> You're like, what? I was like, I wrote this article about you, and I'm going to put it on NASCAR.com. I just wanted to tell you about that before you – so it don't, you don't read it and go, or somebody sent it to you, and you yeah. don't get weirded out. It would seem that there was an occasion for it. Now, first of all, do you remember this at all? Um, I do not. Okay. It seems that the occasion was you I were about to get married. Call. And that, that, that's my point, is that uh, yeah. you're a family guy. Well, mm-hmm. this is apparently Genesis 1-1 of right. Hank okay. Parker Jr., right? All right, <laughs> so here it is. Here we go. This is by Dale Hart Jr. We ought to get some little, you know, some music for this. I'm sure they'll put uh, some on. Yeah, I'm sure they will. <laughs> Yo. It's that time again to get a dose of my column. Better late than never, they say. <clears throat> this is it's like Hemingway. All right. <laughs> yo. You know what it starts out but with? Believe yo. it or not, I had written a few columns for this month and canned them all. <laughs> I decided to skip over the latest controversial topics like restrictor plates to tell you a thing or two about a buddy of mine. You all know him as Hank Parker Jr. Around here, we call him all sorts of things. Some that can't be printed. First off, Hank and I have been friends for years, way before he ever got the nerve to drive race cars. Second, he's probably one of the most impressionable personalities in the sport. How about that? It's wow. nice. Yeah. Wow. I met Hank on a hunting trip with my father. My father hunted with Hank Sr. quite often in those days, and me and Hank met on a few of those trips. For a few years, we would see each other, but it was a while before we got to be good friends. Hank and I had, and still do have, different outlooks on life. That's interesting. Yeah. We'll get back to that in a second. Okay. I can't say that I could explain either one of them, but I know they are not two in the same. Hank was really into the outdoors. I, on the other hand, could take it or leave it. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I actually was better friends with his two brothers, Bill and Ben. Me yep. and those two were getting into trouble on the weekends while Hank was off with his girlfriend. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Write a note down. We got to get back to that, okay. too, because, okay, I mean, this down. wasn't part of the stories, I okay. recall. One day at the shop, my father tells me that Hank Sr. wants to buy buy my street stock for Lil Hank. You got Lil, not Lil, Lil Hank, Lil. Lil Hank. That's that's my rapper name. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> right, right, Lil Hank. <laughs> this was good news because I always thought Hank was cool, and if he was gonna race, we might get to the ha- we got might get to hang out more often. So we sold him the car, and it wasn't long before I was driving in the BGN series, and Hank was getting offers to join me there. In those days, I tried really hard to keep to help him on the racetrack. I couldn't think of anyone else I would rather be banging doors with in my racing future than my buddy, Hank. I always thought he was a great driver with in-depth knowledge and unlimited ability. Before long, me and Hank were swapping setups at the track and club hopping during the week. Oh, boy. We've got to write a note. We've got to ask about the club, club hopping, hopping, please. Thank you. On it. <laughs> we spent the better part of two years doing that. Two years of club hopping, Hank? Is that what y'all were doing? My name was Little, Little, Hank. Little Hank. Yeah. yeah. Were, 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 you, were, you, were you the DJ? Did you have a job at the club no, that night, Little no, Hank? No, no, no. Okay. When I, uh, we, we spent the better part of two years doing that one week after the next. When I threw a bash at the house, Hank was the life of the party. When we went to the clubs, no one had a better time than Little Hank. We spent a lot of time racing on computers, critiquing our driving skills and patience. Anytime we had a career decision to make, most of the time, he would call me for some advice. He only took it half the time. <laughs> but, what, but, but what the hell do I know? Dale Jr. qualifies that. Yeah. Last year, me and him, along with a few others, had the most fun on Halloween. Hank took us up to an old haunted hotel. Seemed like it was over 100 years old. It freaked us out pretty good. We did a little bird hunting that winter as well. Those were the times, I tell you. Well, lots changed, as it always does. Old Hank is getting married. It's really no surprise to me. I joke with him all the time about it happening sooner. I tried my hardest to make him feel like a deserter. <laughs> <laughs> he did a good job of that. <laughs> he did a really good job of that. <laughs> a deserter, he says. To be honest, though, this girl's one hell of a catch. 
almost like a female version of Hank. <laughs> Weird but true. <laughs> <laughs> Not my cousin. <laughs> yeah, right. So, yeah, so close to Hank, you'd think they're related. <laughs> no. Even though we still look at the world around us in a different way, me and Hank still find time to chill out together, albeit not as often as before. Hank Jr. has always been a workhorse, but he still calls after every win. I get a lot of credit for being real. Well, this guy takes the cake. Congratulations on finding your bride, Hank, and thank you for being my friend. Still single and loving it. Dale Earnhardt Jr. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Okay, where do we start? I think I we got to go to the trouble, right? <laughs> well, let's go to the, let's go to the trouble because I mean, the, Dale Jr.'s conflicted. We got deserter yeah. Hank. I mean, yeah. you're, you're leaving your wingman yeah. apparently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, uh, yeah. <laughs> did y'all really get into trouble? I mean, are, are, well, <clears throat> I will say this: he did. He he mentioned it in there. He hung out with my brothers more, and they got in a lot more trouble yes, than I did. I've always heard that catfish was, you know, quite the hellraiser. Is that true? He's pretty crazy. He's wild. He's calmed down. <laughs> yeah. He's well, married. Yeah, we've all calmed Dude, down. So. Everybody's tom- everybody's, everybody's calm calmed way down. down. Yeah. We would. Um... <laughs> oh Lord! Come on, <laughs> listen. Come on. It's a, it, it's the podcast. Yeah. What we got? Well, it, it seemed it, for for this story, we all sh- we sh- we it doesn't feel right telling it without catfish in the room, but yeah, or Ben. Uh, they were two great guys, and um, just as nice and friendly and easy to be around as Hank was, and uh, and Hank Jr. was more career driven, more yeah. goal oriented. He definitely put more work into his relationships with his with his wife and and. Um, so when I would come around, I'd be like, Hey man, let's go buy a bunch of eggs and go egg a bunch of cars and, <laughs> or toilet Gosh. paper, somebody's house or play mailbox baseball and Jeez. yeah, crazy yeah. stuff. And Ben and Bill would raise their hand and Hank Jr. <laughs> would be like, oh, I got to stay home. I got to do, do this and that and other. That's funny. I don't remember any of that. Yep. <laughs> oh crap. <laughs> His memory's impeccable yeah. up until this point. Now, now <laughs> that was when we were younger. Yeah. Uh, when I was just getting my license and just raising hell. Um, but we got into going to, you know, we'd, we'd drink together and always had a great time. And I knew that, you know, hanging around Hank was always going to be good, clean, safe, fun. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> you know, Hank wasn't ever going to do anything <clears throat> questionable. I wasn't, I wasn't either. Um, and we were going to be wild and wide open, mm-hmm. but we was going to stay in our lane. And I always knew when we were going to hang out it was just going to be fun but um one of the most impressive things about hank and we'll tell you anytime you come on this podcast before uh we put it out on the air if anything in here you don't like (laughs) we'll take it out yeah Yeah. but one of the things about hank that was most impressive was his ability to puke and rally he was a big (laughs) he was a very oh oh, he he was a puker rally a puker now, <laughs> not not I have drank so much I'm nauseated and I probably should go to bed, but he just it just didn't set on his stomach right. I don't even know if you can explain it. I can't. I can. You know. I think I've learned a lot since then. About <laughs> life. But I can tell you this: I can remember most after all the like uh, short track races, I would puke my guts out for hours after races, and I just. Pretty weak stomach, but it, did. it, it didn't slow me down. No. I kept on going. Like, we'd, oh, we wow. would have, like, four or five beers, and he'd go, I need to throw up. And he'd walk <laughs> out in the yard and literally bend over and, and projectile <laughs> into the yard and turn around, walk back in, grab a beer. Like nothing and, ever happened. And we ain't even got a good buzz yet. Champion. <laughs> That's a champ. And I'm like, damn. <laughs> you good? He's like, I'm great. <laughs> well, better now. I'm like, okay, buddy. I will. I will throw this in for disclaimer. Uh, yes, that that is all of that is very true. Uh, my life is a lot different now. It is a lot I'm different. Super thankful for gray hair, maturity, and God's grace. I can tell you that. But uh, that that is uh, that was uh, they they like that. They were they would wait for that. Like, when, <laughs> when's it gonna happen? Oh, when's it gonna happen? Yeah. What was Dale Jr. like to to hang out with? Just like he is right now. I'm not sure he's grown up and mature. Oh, no, I'm oh, just kidding. Oh, no. that's, I'm that's, kidding. I, I, I don't believe that. No, like, you're just good. You know, just funny. Funny is all get out and have have a good time. And uh, 
you know, it's, it was always uh, the same group of people. You know, there would be a lot of people sometimes, but it was, there was always this core group, and it was always just a, just, just, you know, there was a time there. There was always this serious Dale Jr. at the racetrack. You know, where he's like really focused, and then there's this completely uh, funny, turn it off, mischievous, crazy Dale Jr. And that's 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 what it was like off the track. I mean, by now, I mean, gosh, Dale, you and I. We've been friends so long. I think I've heard about all the stories, but I don't, and, and I definitely know stories where you got in trouble with your dad, Yeah. but I don't recall any, any serious trouble with your dads uh, on anything y'all did. I mean, I, I, maybe y'all kept the mailbox situation to yourselves. Damn, if daddy knew about that. Oh, yeah. Holy smokes. Have been over. He'd have wore my ass out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, you didn't play games with my dad either. And there was a time, man, like, you know, when you're talking like when you're 17, 18 years old and you're you're just young and dumb and doing stupid things. I was I was really trying to to not lose the opportunity of driving a race car. So I think really I, I was a late bloomer as far as uh, coming into being wild into my early 20s. And, you know, kind of when I first came onto the scene of, of uh, um, the, the bush cars. But. You know, it's uh, it, it was it was it was a tough road to get there. You know, and so you kind of always trying to stay focused and get these race cars ready. And and you know, you've got limited opportunity. And I, I kind of had a sight for that at that moment, but I kind of lost sight of it well, after you, time. You know, I'm curious. Dale Jr. says that he never expected to get that ride at, at DEI in '98. Ninety-eight, right? Yeah, I mean, and they didn't even tell him until like <laughs> about the time they were loading up. It seemed like. Were you as shocked that he made it in ninety-eight and then became a champion? I mean, because you were with him back to sixteen years old. He was a bit of a late bloomer himself. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I will say this: I was super thankful when he got that opportunity because I felt like he was going to do a good job. And if you kind of you look from the uh, from the flip side of that, the pressure that he was under, you know, that that was a ton of pressure back then because you had an established team. And you had these guys who were used to uh, uh, you just a whole a company that was used to winning, and so you put him in the seat, and he 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 performed, and it was awesome, and and it was it was it was a fun thing to be a competitor and watch him do that because that was pretty impressive. That was a very impressive time to see him stand underneath that type of pressure and win. That was that was really cool. All right, now go listen to our podcast. The Dale Jr. Download is available for free on all major podcast platforms.